Welcome again to Healthy Living in OCN Network. My name is Dr. Victor Oranusi, a medical doctor and also a pastor at All Nation Living Fountains Church and World Outreach Center in Los Angeles, California, and in Compton. In this program, we are discussing issues that pertains to a healthy life, healthy living, how a child of God can maintain their health. And when we talk about health, we are not just talking about physical health. We're talking about health in every area. Having a healthy lifestyle, a life of joy and peace that glorifies God. A life that benefits and profits from the promises of God in his word concerning his children. It reminds us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Everything that pertains to life has been provided to us through Jesus Christ. Through the knowledge of him. When you know him, when you truly know him, you will be able to partake. And the grace of God will multiply in your life. That grace and peace be multiplied. It will multiply. The peace of God will multiply. It doesn't matter how much money that you have. If you don't have peace, you are not having a healthy life. Many people, millionaires, they will go and commit suicide because of lack of peace in their life. We've known in the news of many people that have passed on, committed suicide. Although there are more time millionaires with contracts to even last them, multiple, even if they decide not to work for another hundred years, they will not be able to spend what they already made. And yet, because of that lack of peace, they will commit suicide. So you can see when we talk about healthy living, we're not just talking about money. We talk about everything that will allow you to live an abundant life, a life that glorifies God. Having healthy family life, healthy relationship, Healthy physical health, of course, having great physical health. It pertains to everything. Healthy children. Children that honor you, that honor God in their life. Peace in your neighborhood. In your place of work. It allows you, this is abundant life you are enjoying. And you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see when we talk about health, we're not just specifically limiting ourselves to physical health. I know I'm a physician and I have patients. Although physically they are sound, but there's no peace because of depression, anxieties, and other things that actually now causing them great physical harm. You know, it's easy to treat something that you can lay your hands on. If I know that you have infection, I can give you antibiotics, and I believe God that it will work. But when there's nothing physical, and yet you are troubled so much, it makes it difficult. Because you can watch infection heal right away. So you, have, you need that peace of God. You need healthy life, overall health, wholeness. When we talk about healthy life, we are talking about walking in wholeness. And that wholeness comes through Jesus Christ. And today we are going to talk about specific focusing on wisdom, relying on God's wisdom as a, for a faithful, for a fruitful, healthy Christian life. You want your life to be fruitful. You want your life to be, want to a healthy Christian life. You have to rely on God's wisdom. So our focus here is applying the wisdom of God 
relying on the wisdom of God for a fruitful and a healthy Christian life. Let us pray before we continue. Father, we thank you, my God, for this opportunity to come again to study your word, to apply your truth for a healthy Christian life. You have called us to be your children, people that are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to destroy the work of the devil. He came to redeem our life from destruction. He redeemed us from the cause of the law. He became a cause for us and replaced that cause with the blessing of Abraham. Father, we want to partake of that blessing. We want to also live abundant life, a life that glorifies you, that people will see that this gospel works, that your word is true and faithful. So that they themselves who do not know you will seek you to know you and apply their life will, not, will be different because of the truth of your word. For your word is true. Father, I pray for everyone, of, everyone that is listening to this program. Open their eyes to see. Give us understanding of your truth. Let your words that come out of my mouth be the word of life. Use it to touch life. Use it to transform us. Use it to quicken us. Use it to allow us to apply our heart unto your wisdom. To apply your wisdom for a healthy life, a healthy Christian life, for a fruitful Christian life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And let's turn to the word of God in Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 5 to 10. This is our foundation scripture for this teaching. In the previous message, in the previous program, I touched on a number of things. Basically, I emphasized two main areas that will allow us to enjoy an abundant life as we apply God's wisdom. We noted that wisdom of God will cause us to acknowledge, will cause you to acknowledge God in all your ways. And we talked about the importance of that wisdom when you acknowledge God in all your ways. Everything that the Word of God says will be your portion, every promise of God. Because when you believe God's report, when you believe God's Word and walk in it, you will see the benefit. Anything that you despise, you cannot benefit from it. So if you despise the word of God, you cannot benefit from it. So wisdom of God will cause you to acknowledge that God is true. That is why the word of God in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1, he says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? If you don't believe God's report, God's word, basically. What is God's report? His word. What he says. What he has proclaimed. What he has promised. If you don't believe it, then you will despise it. You will not apply the word of God. We emphasize on this area of bitterness and unforgiveness and hatred. Gossiping because you hate the person. You want to trash the person. You are opening the door to the enemy. We also talked about despising God's word. If wisdom will cause you not to despise God's word, because God's ways are the part of life. You want to shut the door to the enemy. So let's go back to that foundation scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not Unto thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. 
honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy increase. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Don't despise the word of God. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Be not wise in thy own eyes. He, so many areas that he has talked. So wisdom of God will cause you to acknowledge God in all thy ways. Wisdom of God will cause you not to despise God's ways. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I read it in our previous program, but I want to go back to that, this passage because it's important as people of God to really apply the word of God to our life. When you understand God's word, when you know him, and you can only know him by his word because his word is true. When you truly know him, you will walk in his path. You will be able to overcome. You will partake of the blessings and you will partake of the promises of God. You will live abundant life that glorifies him. You may see yourself, you may see someone that have more time, millions, and you yourself that have much, much less. You see yourself enjoying a life, have a joyful life, healthy life, healthy relationship, more than that person. Why? Because you're applying the word of God to your life. You decide to walk in the wisdom of God. You are relying on God's own understanding, not in your own understanding. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 21 to 25, it says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. He pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greek. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Basically, God's word is wiser. God is wiser than men. People who want to tell, them, tell you to give them a proof, like the Greeks, he says, show me the proof of God's existence. Show me the proof that God, it's God that wrote this word. But the word of God said that all scriptures are written by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. Others will say, no, I don't believe that Jesus is God himself. He's the son of God. Don't believe. They don't acknowledge the deity of Jesus Christ. It's a stumbling block to them. So everything about Jesus and the truth of God's word is foolishness. Even some people don't acknowledge the word of God. Even You cannot separate God's word from him. We want to partake of everything that God has given to us that pertains to life and godliness, an abundant life, a healthy life, you have to acknowledge him. It may be foolishness to other people. You may think that if people may tell you that you are foolish for forgiving people of their trespasses against you, not to walk in anger and bitterness. It may appear foolish, but that is what the word of God says. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God 
is stronger than men. What appears to be weakness is actually the strength, great strength, great opportunity for you to be an overcomer, to walk in victory, to partake of the best that God has, to ward off the hands of the enemy in your health, in your family, in your relationship, in the life of your children. You want to live a victorious life, a life that glorifies God, a life that people will see they envy. They say, indeed, God is with them. So wisdom, number three, going to number three in our teaching, wisdom of God will cause you to have a heart of gratitude. You want to partake of that which God has already given to you, the blessings, the help that he promised, everything that will allow you to live an abundant life. You have to have a heart of gratitude. That's wisdom. Many people, they always want to get, they complain, complain and complain, but they never reflect. No heart of gratitude. Even you have somebody that works for you. It may be a domestic staff, it may be somebody that works in your office. You never acknowledge anything that they do right. You only seen evil. Sometimes people don't acknowledge. It happens in the family when we do counseling, when we counsel husbands and wives. One thing we do emphasize is acknowledge the greatness in your spouse. Sow the seed of greatness by the words that you speak. All you are seeing, when you're only seeing evil and suspicion in your spouse, you can never enjoy your marriage because you walk in anxiety. You always see anxiety. Oh, what is she doing? Or what is she doing? Or what is, oh, you, mis you begin to misconstrue anything that they do. Because you do not acknowledge, you do not have a heart of gratitude. You don't even acknowledge or thank God in your heart that God gave me a husband or gave, God gave me a wife, you think that the grass is greener on the other side. You don't have a heart of gratitude. You begin to despise your spouse. You begin to despise your staff. You know, when you begin to have a heart of gratitude, you will treat that person as a person. You will love God. You will acknowledge and thank God, be thankful to God. And whatever changes that you desire in the life of your spouse or your staff or anyone that God has given to you, God will work in their life. Because first of all, you have a heart of gratitude. You say, thank God, Father, you give me the best. Remember, we all have our own areas of weakness, but it's only by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God, we are changed. He continues to mold us. We continue to walk in the light of the gospel. But when you don't have a heart of gratitude, all you are doing is you only complain, wanting more, but you don't appreciate. You never appreciate what God has given. So you, you must have a heart of gratitude. Wisdom will cause you to have a heart of gratitude. And in having that heart of gratitude, it will allow you to partake of every blessing that God has. I want us to turn to the book of Isaiah. Psalm 103, we're going to read verses 1 to 8 and verse 12. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who giveth all thy, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So number one, you are grateful to God for forgiving all your iniquities. When you have a heart of gratitude, you remember that God forgave you first. So you will forgive your neighbor. You will forgive your staff. You will forgive your spouse. Wisdom will allow you to have a heart of gratitude. Your first gratitude is to God. That through our Lord Jesus Christ, he has redeemed 
us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So you forgive because you remember that he forgiveth us all our sins. Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Again, wisdom of God will acknowledge you to walk, have a heart of gratitude, acknowledging that God shows his loving kindness and mercies towards you so that you can extend the same to others. When you don't have a heart of gratitude, you will deal with people who fiercely, you will not show mercy, you will not show forgiveness, you will not show kindness. Because you don't acknowledge that God has done it to you. You don't say it. You're only worried about what you don't have. But you should remember how much God loves you and has shown you mercies and kindness. And that will allow you to also extend it to others. See who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed by the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. When you acknowledging God by wisdom, having a heart of gratitude, you acknowledge that God has been defending your cause. When you have no might, you have no power, when you have no strength. You say, when we are, have no strength, when we are yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. When you have no strength, it became your strength. So you acknowledge him. That, that's a motivation for you to show mercies and kindness to others. And to defend the oppressed so that you yourself will not become an oppressor. It's so easy and I see people that easily forget what God has done for them all these years. Where he has brought them from. Either healed them or brought them from the pits. They get high, they forget, no heart of gratitude. But what shows that you don't have a heart of gratitude is the way you deal with others. That you forget that you were once in facing different challenges and God lifted you up. So wisdom of God will cause you to have a heart of gratitude. See, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the throne of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. As far as the east is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions from us. God is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. If you truly acknowledge him, wisdom will cause you to acknowledge God's mercies, his grace, his faithfulness. It will cause you to have a heart of gratitude demonstrated by you, not just acknowledging it by your, with your words, but by your actions, how you show those kindness and mercies to others. You slow to anger. Don't act out of anger. And dealing with people fiercely because you are angry. Saying unkind words to others because you are angry. You are not acknowledging God's mercies and grace upon your life. You lack wisdom. And then you are yielding room to the enemy to attack because you don't show mercy. Jesus himself said that if you don't forgive my Father in heaven, will not forgive you. You are breaking the hedge. And when that hedge is broken, the enemy finds a way to attack. But we want to live a healthy life. We want to live, have a healthy Christian life. We want to partake of every blessing that God has purposed for you, you and I as believers. 
So you must be slow to anger. You must acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge God's faithfulness by having a heart of gratitude. St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 4 to, 7, 4 to 9, he says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye came behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. St. Paul is reminding the people of God how thankful he was about the grace of God in their life. We must have a heart of gratitude. Wisdom will cause you to have a heart of gratitude towards God so that you can give. You give financially. You give also, you give that love. You show that grace that he has given to you by acknowledging him. Because you are, have, are grateful to God, you have a heart of gratitude, then you share that mercies, that grace that God has given to you with others. This is wisdom. So wisdom of God allows us to live a healthy life. It will cause you to acknowledge God in all your ways, not to despise God's ways of doing things, and finally, to have a heart of gratitude. Ultimately, that allows you to have a healthy Christian life, a partake of everything that God has given to you and I through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. God loves you today. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to, to pray. I want you to pray. Repeat this prayer with me. Open your heart to him. He loves you. Your sins are forgiven. He died for your sins. He rose again after the third day to justify you. He's now in heaven on the right hand of the Father, pleading, interceding on your behalf. His blood is available, continually cleansing you, closing the doors for the, against the every attack of the enemy, against the devil, that you re maintaining your right standing with God. Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, you am, I acknowledge you as my God, through faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he rose again after the third day to justify me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Today, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. I choose to serve you. Empower me, give me a new heart, Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let my life glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for listening to OCN Network, to Healthy Living on OCN Network. I look forward to seeing you again. Remember, Jesus loves you. Praise the Lord. Amen. <music>